Hello, everyone. Welcome to Made to Dream. I'm your host, Maya Chanel, and here we share stories from women around the world to inspire, educate, and empower women and young girls to dream without limitations. Today, I have the pleasure of speaking with Miss Lori Rising, and she is a podcast host, a retreat leader, a pelvic floor therapist, an author, and a supportive healer. So I am so excited to see all the many things that she has been able to accomplish in her life, how she is helping people, being a support system for others, and just creating her own success. So hi, how are you doing today, Lori? Hi, Maya. Thank you so much. I'm doing well. I'm concerned for the earth, but I'm doing well. (laughs) Oh my gosh. I think we all are like, I think everyone needs to just kind of relax a little bit and then um, reduce their footprint <laughs> on the earth <laughs> yeah, because we are doing some up. damage. Yes, yeah. we are doing yeah. some damage. So yeah. um, go. So I want you to just open up, up the floor for you to allow yourself to introduce yourself to the audience and let them know a little bit more about you and what you do. Yeah. So like you said, I'm Lori Rising and uh, my career has been kind of going since probably I was, I don't know, 17. I started educating myself in healthcare. I think I started with becoming an EMT. And then Mm. I've just continued on. And I feel like everything that I've done is a product of my experience. Um, I think that's how sometimes we kind of put ourselves in a box career wise. And then as we go through life and accumulate Mm -hmm. our own personal experiences and find navigate our ways through them. We Mm -hmm. want to share that with others, you know, what Mm -hmm. helped, what was supportive, like how we like climbed our mountain, you know? And so I feel like throughout my life, everything I've done has come, has organically kind of unfolded in that way. But I've always been in healthcare. I I was born believing in the divinity of humans. And so Mm. when I discovered our fear culture, it just never resonated with me. I kind of like didn't feel human because I just thought, (laughs) I know how powerful we are. Like I knew what kind of magic we could produce if we weren't Mm -hmm. living in such fear, you know, and Mm -hmm. if, if we weren't limiting ourselves. And so I've always tried to kind of break through that. So I also, if you get on my Instagram, it it says fear culture destroyer, because (laughs) I just, I don't want anything to do with that. And I'm so excited to be on the podcast talking to especially younger girls, because life is limitless. Being a human Mm -hmm. is limitless. You have so much potential and magic. And so at this point in the past year, I've kind of transitioned from from one-on-one client work into the bigger realm, like really trying Mm -hmm. to reach a large audience and the world with my message. Cause it's like, it was, it was just too small when I was going one-on-one. And I feel like now is the time, as we see, we're going through such intense change. And uh, we spoke a little bit before about this, but we need change is not easy you know it takes a lot of work and it sometimes it takes some hardship to get to that change um but if we all work together you know that's i'm also really community oriented and i think that in our culture that that can feel a little bit fearful and limitless like we become pretty isolated so Mm -hmm. i always want to spread the message of like we're so much more powerful together and in community and, you know, unconditional love and caring. So my podcast is all about the wild heart revolution, which is, you know, coming from a place of love and divinity and breaking through the fear culture and looking at our shadow and our dark, because it's through the dark that we see that light, you know, that Mm -hmm. we can can open up to that light. And so I'm writing a few books <laughs> and uh, in my spare time <laughs> while I'm, mm-hmm. while I'm doing podcasts. <laughs> and I'm seeing people more virtually now online doing what I call holistic soul care sessions. Um, what else am I doing? I feel like there's so much, you know, I'm really trying to inspire. <laughs> I'm really trying to inspire through Instagram as well. I feel like that's a really great platform that we can, Mm -hmm. um, let's see what I, I I used to teach childbirth education classes and I'm writing Mm -hmm. a book on childbirth right now, but, um, I think what I used to tell people is, um, oh my gosh, what did I say? It's like, what's your focus? You know, what do you surround yourself with? What are the messages? 
because right. we're, we're taking in messages all the time through our environment, through mm -hmm. words, through thoughts, through energy. So what is in your community? Because if those messages are not empowering, then we're fighting right. a bigger battle. You know, we're having to go up mm -hmm. a higher hill. And so when we really surround ourselves with the people that we resonate with, we automatically vibe higher, you know, and we, we yeah. trickle out. It's a beautiful ripple effect. So whatever you're doing inside your soul work, you're doing for everyone else around you. Most definitely make that impact on a larger scale. And I totally agree with you on that. Um, especially surrounding yourself with the right people. Like you said, you know, your energy, tr energy transfers, okay? Energy is not created or destroyed, it's transferred. So if you're around negativity, it's just gonna reflect right on you. And you're not even, sometimes you don't even realize it, you know? It's just like something that is not seen or heard. So I think that's really interesting. So um, let's walk through a little bit more about how you got started on your journey and how you've been able to shape your mindset to release that fear from your life and make that transformation to say, you know what, I'm done fearing things that I that are hindering my lifestyle. So how do you, how did you get to this point? Hmm. Well, um, I don't know how many people believe in astrology out there, but I have a whole lot of Aries in my chart. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an Aquarius. <laughs> All right. You're pretty independent too. Um, that's, yeah. that's, it's a lot of fire. So I, you know, I've just always been kind of fearless and fiery since I was a little girl. Um, you know, mm -hmm. I, I know my dad had me swimming out in the lake in diapers. You know, I just, um, oh my God. <laughs> I've always, listen, been... just throw them out there get rid of the fears because <laughs> it's, the thing is we don't, we're not born fearing anything. We're taught to fear. Exactly. We're taught to fear. So it's like, we have exactly to uncondition Maya. ourselves. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We have to uncondition ourselves to let go of that. Yeah, that's the thing. This is what breaks my heart is that most of us are living our whole lives um, trying to shed conditioning, trying to shed this mm -hmm. cultural conditioning that is toxic. You know, even yes. when we look in our media world, like that's some of the most toxic conditioning and it's constantly, we're being hypnotized constantly by that. We're taking those messages in and especially for women, you right. are absolutely beautiful. You are a beautiful human. You're here. Like I, oh, I, d yeah, don't even get me started on that. But um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so I think you know, I was adopted and I think that informed a lot of my experience. I went through quite a bit when I was young with that. And so mm -hmm. through my, I had a pretty difficult childhood just from the feeling of abandonment, you know, and my, mm -hmm. I, my adoptive family is absolutely wonderful. I'm madly in love with them. They gave me a wonderful mm -hmm. life, you know, but anything that we experience, especially as babies, you know, Mm -hmm. it, it is in us babies feel that's why I've that's why I dedicated my life to doing the childbirth work and that's why I'm writing this mm -hmm. book because the way that we support our families and the way that we support our mothers birthing is exactly how we can look at our culture you know we our right. birthing system is one of uh we're ha having babies in fear and stress and tension Imagine if we were having all of our babies filled with love and nourishing, nourishment mm -hmm. and nurturing, and those babies were coming in in trust, right? Mm -hmm. They're coming in in fear and their mothers are right. in, they're in panic. And so that's where mm -hmm. we really have to look as a culture. This is why I've been so obsessed with community-based birth is because as a culture, mm -hmm. we need to look at what we're doing there. And so I think that that my, you know, my the abandonment wound that I had have, uh -huh, I'm always working with it, you know? Um, mm -hmm. I think that informed really me going into healthcare. I wanted to work with adopted kids. Mm -hmm. Well, that had kind of, that's transformed into working with childbirth. Um, but then I, as I went through college, I kind of had this more spiritual awakening to God. Mm -hmm. And for me, I really realized that the, the same thing I'd always known is like, we have divinity within ourselves. Like we have God right. within ourselves. There's the God mm -hmm. of the out, out, you know, our universe, source, spirit, God, however, mm -hmm. you know, whatever the power that, that is the way that you feel it is perfect. You mm -hmm. know? Um, and for me, I realized, wow, I can access God within myself as well. 
uh, right. you know, moving out to what I, what I feel as God mm-hmm. on the outside, I can feel God on the inside. And so right. that moved me into the more holistic healthcare world where mm-hmm. I really discovered a type of therapy called myofascial release, which is a trauma it's a trauma informed body work therapy where we mm-hmm. actually can release uh, physical and emotional trauma from our cells. This includes mm-hmm. intergenerational trauma. This includes trauma that we inherit through our DNA. Right. And so also let me, I don't mean to jump in. I want no, I like, I like what you, I like what you said right there. So, you know, the whole nature versus nurture debate, what is your stance on that? Oh my gosh. So I could write a whole book on that because I actually, (laughs) I met my mother when I was 19, my biological mother. Right. So, Mm -hmm. um, I grew up in rural Iowa. So very small Mm -hmm. town, Iowa, and I am who I am. You can see who I am, right? (laughs) Yes. Kind of wild hair. Like I'm. (laughs) this is free, free thinker, free spirit all the way. Mm -hmm. So this has always been me. And I was raised, you know, in a Catholic family in a small town (laughs) who have, and my, my parents have quite different views than me. And so I never understood, Uh like, it didn't ever make sense to me. And I think that I had a hard time with that because no one looked like me. No one laughed like me, you know, no one like acted like me. And so when Mm -hmm. I met my mother, I was like, oh my God, there I am. There I am. (laughs) Like literally it was like a mirror. We both are crazy about dog rescue. We're both really into tarot. We're both into really spiritual things and astrology, Mm -hmm. like everything I love, she loves, but yet I wasn't raised with her. Right. Right. But yet in the same note, like I have my morals, my work ethic have all come from my parents, even kind of my fearlessness. You know, my dad Mm -hmm. had me driving when I was eight years old. Right. Like Mm -hmm. I'm out in the country and I'm doing (laughs) crazy things that most kids never do. And so I think that he really instilled that fearlessness in me. And now when I'm traveling the world by myself and they're ripping Mm -hmm. their hair out, I'm like, you did this. (laughs) <laughs> right you, you know what I mean you fostered this adventure mm-hmm. spirit in me so I believe in nature and nurture hardcore like I've seen both of them and it's that's crazy. me I'm 50 50 I always yeah. said it was 50 50 because it's like some things are just in your DNA like you cannot get rid of that some things are just etched mm-hmm. into your DNA but then you depending on the environment you are in, you can have a different outlook on that genetic DNA. You know what I mean? Like you can still be that person, but then you have this added bonus or this other reflection of you from that nurture side. So I've always been this 50, 50 person on that ever since I was introduced to the theory. I was like, Oh no, it's definitely 50, 50 all all the way. (laughs) Absolutely. Maya. It's called epigenetics. Your Mm -hmm. environment is how, is what creates the expression of your genes. And that's what Mm -hmm. I'm working with, with childbirth. That's why the environment that we are birthing our children in Mm -hmm. actually creates an expression of their genes where they might not trust the world. They might have, you know, they might be going throughout their lives in a state of panic and fear because that's how they came in. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I love that you just, you brought that up. That's so exciting. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I I was like, this is the perfect person to ask this question because I feel like, you know, we're, we're clicking right now. We're clicking. I'm in, I'm in. (laughs) So, um, let's talk about some obstacles that you've had to overcome in your life. How have you gone through those different difficult situations and use your mindset to, come out of them and to create a positive outlook on it and create your own success and say, you know what? Okay, this is going on, but I could be doing this. Yes. So I'm so glad you brought that up because we are humans having a human experience. And if you haven't noticed, (laughs) this is for the general public. We have created a really difficult experience for humans in our culture. And so it's, we are having to work really hard. So of course we are going to go through dark. We're going to go through pain. You know, we're going to go through emotion and the, I guess the, and you know, I had to kind of fight for this. Like people can be uncomfortable around me because I express everything. I don't just express happiness. 
Like mm-hmm. you will know what I'm expressing. I don't, I, I don't fake it ever. Right. Listen, listen, I do not have a poker face. So I understand. I'm like, I try so hard. <laughs> right. I try so hard, but it just doesn't work. It doesn't oh my work. Gosh. I'll be a terrible poker player. Right. Okay. So can, can you lie to people? I can't lie. It's all over my face. And so yes. when I, yeah. So when I was young, I just decided like, I just have to tell the truth. So my parents knew when I was out drinking, when I was a teenager, I couldn't <laughs> lie about it. you know what I mean? Like, so you just start laughing, huh? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I just like had, like, I was like, yeah, here we go. You know? So, um, <laughs> I guess that's a superpower. I feel like it's a superpower because, Mm -hmm. you know, that's the most beautiful expression in the world is being your true, being your truth in the world Mm -hmm. with your people, you know? And so I went through probably 10 years of um, wounded pain. Like I, Mm -hmm. I was taken down to probably the lowest level that you can get. Um, My daughter was still born. And so Mm. That was uh, many years ago, I think 14, 15 years ago, I can't even, which is amazing that I'm not exactly on the year right now, but um, you know, that started pretty much a seven to eight year journey of pain, suffering. Mm -hmm. Uh, I lost my health. I lost my family. You know, I left my marriage. There was so much grief. There was so much pain. I had to restart my life in that state, Mm -hmm. which is the hardest thing I have ever done. But I will tell you what, this is what I came to, you know, I was feeling all the feels like I was mm-hmm. in a very, very low place. Um, and I got to this point because I've always, I, I had that true North of like knowing the divinity in humans and knowing what we, what our abilities and like that I could get out of it. And there was a point mm-hmm. where I had been crying every day for years. And I just said right. to myself, you have, you have to change it. Like there mm-hmm. has, this is, this can't be the rest of life. Like you right. have this, this experience right now in this body, this time. And if mm-hmm. you don't change this, you're going to, this is going to be your experience in this mm-hmm. body. And so I somehow summon the strength to change my whole life, to leave the love of my life, who I still love. I'm going to love him for the rest. He's the father of my children who aren't here. They grew wings, but I will mm-hmm. never stop loving him. But I left him because he needed to stay where he was and I couldn't. I had to actually change my environment because the triggers were so deep that I wasn't able to change it for myself. You know, Mm -hmm. I think we get really stuck in this like, you have to stay in one job. You have to stay in one place. Like you have to make something work no matter how much it's killing you which it, mm-hmm. it can be, you know what I mean? That's right. really what was happening to me. And I was, I was, I kind of felt like I was walking around as a shell of a person. Right. And so I basically just like, I, I like kind of, I pretended like the words trust and faith were tattooed on my wrist and I would just look mm-hmm. at them. I should have wrote them in a marker, but I would just look at them. <laughs> I, I had to believe that if I did this someday, mm-hmm. I would smile again. Like, right doing the work doesn't mean you're just going to be happy doing it. It's a lot of work. Like Mm -hmm. you have to want that for yourself. You have to truly Mm -hmm. deeply want that shift because we're so powerful as humans. We can shift anything and we're so powerful that we can stay in anything too. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So you really have to access that, that desire to change and then take the steps. You know, I took the first step, which is basically like getting in my car and leaving. And then I came out here and, you know, there was so many steps. There were so many things And this. For me, it took years. And I feel like when I look Mm -hmm. back, I look back at those years as like, those were the years that I was becoming the wounded healer. And like I said before, when we go through an experience, we can better help someone else going through that experience. We have such a deeper empathy in that place. And so I feel like that's why I've become the woman of many hats. You know what I mean? That's why I have so many avenues because I've been through so many deep life experiences and felt them on such a raw level that I do not fear your deepest well of grief. Like I will stand in the fire with you and I will support you while you figure out how to move out of that. Like I will do whatever I can. So I feel like, I don't, I hope that answered your question. (laughs) It felt like a long answer, but, um, 
I love what you said, especially when you talked about, you know, being yourself and being like, we talked about, you know, how society and our culture has conditioned us to think that, okay, you're supposed to do one thing for the rest of your life. You're supposed to stick it through. Even if things aren't working out, you're supposed to make it work. And I think that's the beauty of entrepreneurship because we get to create our own image of success because our clientele is going to come to us for who we are and not necessarily someone that we're trying to be. So I think that's important in itself. Absolutely. I completely agree. So just imagine what if we taught everyone growing up to come from a place of abundance instead of scarcity, Mm -hmm. right? And I mean, obviously, what if, what if we had a bigger distribution of wealth? Like we have so much money, we have so much abundance here and we Mm -hmm. have a really messed up system. So what if we actually came from a community oriented place of abundance, you know? And what if, Mm -hmm. what if like you were taught that if you had an idea to like start in your business, Mm -hmm. like you should do it. Like you should absolutely do it because oh my gosh, we could talk about that forever. Right. (laughs) The abundance. Because the world tells us, no, you shouldn't do that because it's not secure. It's It's not, it's not going to work, you know, these different things. So I totally agree Uh, with you on that. (laughs) Yes, I know. And that's what I'm really, I'm actually at middle age now. I'm working on a completely new money mindset. You know, because- and that is okay. That is okay because you're not supposed to just stay stagnant in one place. If you have an idea, act upon it. I don't care how old you are. Just right. think about Colonel Sanders with KFC. I believe he was like 66 pitching this fried chicken around. 66 <laughs> years old. Like your dream does not have an age on it. There's exactly. no age on your dreams. Thank you. Because we have, we have a very ageist society, you know, especially mm-hmm. when it comes, you know, we get so much pressure about family, you know, there's, I mean, we could get into this so much, but yeah. I love that you said that because you have, what you have is the moment that you're in right now. If you're mm-hmm. stressed or worried, you're thinking about the future or thinking about the past, right? right. Mm-hmm. So we mm-hmm. need to be in this moment And know that if we have trust and faith in ourselves and all of our freaking greatness, that abundance is going to come. You know what I mean? Success and money, whatever, whatever we deem success to be, Mm -hmm. that's going to come. It's going to flow. We don't have a culture of flow, but when we start moving in the flow, then things Mm -hmm. can come to us and things leave us. You know what I mean? It's like a game. Most definitely. Yeah. I love that. Absolutely. Most definitely. So if you had to say one thing to women around the world to inspire and encourage them to just dream without limitations, what would it be? Oh my gosh. Number one. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Go ahead. Give us three. Give us three. Give us three. (laughs) Number one, you are absolutely beautiful. Every single ounce of your body, mind, spirit, soul is absolutely gorgeous. Take that in. Tell yourselves that every single day when you wake up, right? Number Mm -hmm. two, like you can do anything. I'm going to give you, okay, here we go. I'm going to give you the the key to success. I've always known this because when I was young, I was an athlete, but I didn't apply it to the rest of my life. You can do anything you have to practice, right? Mm -hmm. So when you start practicing, this is like daily practice. It can be meditation. It can be um, something athletic. It can be physical, like whatever it is that you want to do. It doesn't just happen. Like we have such an immediate gratification culture. Know that there is divine timing and divine timing. Mm -hmm. There might be a reason that it's not happening for you right now. And there might be a reason that it's coming later on. So, Mm -hmm. but you need to put the intention in, you need to put the practice in. I was just writing about this this morning because we don't learn when we're children to practice at like things that lift us up. You know what Mm -hmm. I mean? Spiritually or physically or whatever it is. Like we practice at things that kind of bring us down, which is, you know, Mm -hmm. watching TV and the media and like, you know, going into lower vibrational things. So Mm -hmm. just, just know, like begin a daily practice. Like if you have a dream, begin that practice, journal it every day. It doesn't, you Mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like it's going to, it's going to flow. It's going to change. It's going to become bigger than you ever expected, but you put intention into it and energy into it 
and it's going to come like in some way, shape or form. Totally, totally agree. I loved every bit and part of this conversation. And, you know, we could go on and on and on and on and on. Um, I loved every topic that we spoke about. And I love your message, how encouraging and empowering it is. Um, we thank you for sharing your story here on Made to Dream. I do want to give you the, the space to allow the audience to know if they want to reach you for services or just to follow your journey, how can they do that? Yeah. Thank you, Maya. Um, so basically I'm all across the board, the raw and wild hearts. So if you get on Instagram, it's at the raw and wild hearts, uh, website is www.therawandwildhearts.com. Um, I'm, I've got a Facebook page, but I'm moving towards a Facebook group. So I, I'm really pretty active on Instagram and you're going to find out most of what's happening with me through there, but check out my website. I have a mailing list. I have a really big, beautiful, um, online digital course coming out about pelvic floor therapy and awakening your mm -hmm. life force. And it's mm -hmm. going to be really amazing. So um, get on my mailing list. I send out lots of inspirational things there as well. So I would say that's probably the, the, the best two places to find me. Awesome. Awesome. Well, we thank you so much for sharing your story here. Um, we loved having you as a guest on our show. And we thank our audience for tuning in and listening to us once again. This is Me to Dream. I'm your host, Maya Chanel. And we'll see you next time.